So <clears throat> Katrina Sawa is a wife, a mother, mom, CEO, and founder of jumpstartyourbiznow.com. Her unique vision and values to really to kick her clients into high gear, uh, empowering them to make more money doing what they love and doing it fast. I like that. She's a creator of Jumpstart Your Marketing and Sales System, and she's a 12-time international best-selling author with 20 books to her credit, maybe more now. I don't know. The last time, uh, it could be updated. Um, and she, some of the books are Love Yourself Successful, Jumpstart Your Business Now, and the Jumpstart Your Blank series. I assume that's a fill in the blank, you know, jumpstart, whatever. And I, I, I love the, the concept. Uh, a lot of times we need to get in gear, get in motion, and so I'm really hoping as we as we drill down on that with Katrina today that we we really look at this new month, which is now we're now coming to the last month of the first quarter. Um, it's never too late to jumpstart your business and get some help with that. So I'm hoping that. Katrina can help us there. She's also the CEO of Jumpstart Publishing, founder of the International Speaker Network, and she's been featured on Oprah and Friends XM, XM Radio Network, ABC and the CW. She was awarded the National Collaborator of the Year by the Public Speakers Association and is a two-time nominee for the Wise Woman Award by National Association of Women Business Owners. So, Katrina Sawa, thank you for joining us today in our Warrior Networking Mastermind. Take it away. Yes, thank you. Um, <clears throat> so, I'm happy to be here. I love talking about making money. <laughs> so, I love talking about being more efficient in your business. Uh, being more automated, but still very relationship oriented and personal. That way you're more memorable because when you're more memorable, you get more referrals, you get more business in general. And people think of you as, you know, they think of what you do um, when they run across somebody who needs what you have, like the CBD with, with Bill or not Bill, with uh, Zip, who looks like he dropped off. So, you know, when someone knows what you do, we know Maury is a neuroscientist. I mean, come on, how many neuroscientists do we know? No, not a lot, <laughs> right? Maybe you know, okay, Bill, you know one other one. Okay, good. <laughs> but it's very rare to learn and meet a neuroscientist. So how do you stay memorable enough to where you're the preferred referral person, right? So today we're talking about the focus framework, which is really the five most important areas in your business that people don't focus on enough, I don't think, in order to make a lot more money doing what you love. So of course, we want to do what we love first. Secondly, we want to make a bigger impact, especially you guys, it sounds like, really want to make a bigger impact, which is amazing. Um, but let's make some money along the way because we deserve it, right? And we should feel valued for our time, our expertise, our services, our, you know, so however you choose to make money, that is your choice. Um, I say go big uh, because life is short. And I do have a lot of clients actually in their 50s, 60s, and 70s um, who are starting their new thing, right? Or all their life, they've been wanting to do X, Y, Z, and they felt they couldn't because they had to have the J-O-B, right? And so they've either retired or uh, left corporate finally, and now they're doing their passion. I do have people that are younger that are doing their passion early on, and I wish... You know, I would have found, I wish I would have known now or know then what I know now, right? I started my business at around 35, 32, 32, 32. Um, and, but I have, I meet people all the time in their early 20s and I'm like, oh, you are so lucky, right? I mean, all of you guys know people in their 20s or 30s that understand this online marketing world now and how you do business and you're like, oh. Good for you, right? And keep learning, keep growing, keep investing in yourself and keep doing it sooner than later because that is what's going to get you farther faster, right? The sooner we know how to make a lot of money, the sooner we can set ourselves up for 
not having to stress about money, right? Stress about money and that roller coaster of cash flow is what most entrepreneurs experience in the first three to five years of their business, sometimes even longer. And sometimes so much so that they have to go back and get a job or go out of business. And so I grew up in sales and marketing jobs. So, I mean, I, my first job was an ice cream scooper at Thrifties. Probably you know Thrifties, right? Drugstore. And, uh, and that was my very first job. And I would always be behind the counter. People would be like, well, I want a scoop of whatever chocolate. And I'd be like, don't you want two or three? It's only an extra 25 cents. And so I was constantly upgrading people for something they love, right? Ice cream from one scoop to two or three. So upselling at age 16, that's what I was doing because I loved ice cream. So why wouldn't you want more ice cream, right? So it was easy to sell ice cream. <laughs> and then I got into like retail sales and it was easy to sell clothes and jewelry because I loved clothes and jewelry, right? And then I got into restaurant work and it was easy to sell cocktails. Oh, I love margaritas. Don't you want a margarita? How about a glass of wine? Didn't you want this? And or a dessert or an appetizer or whatever. So I was constantly in that sales and marketing mindset throughout all my jobs, got into corporate. Still, I was in enterprise car rental for a while. I don't know if you know anybody in enterprise car rental. They run you like a dog in there. And it was, again, an upsell. It was like, okay, you're going to rent this car. Don't you want the, you know, the, the protection? Don't you want the damage waiver and the full package? You know, so it was a competition. How many full packages can you sell? Uh, and so, you know, so when you go to a car rental, just ask for the damage waiver. Don't get the full package. You don't need it. Anyways, so, <laughs> um, but, the, <laughs> but it, uh, that really primed me for being an entrepreneur, right? I never really thought I was going to be an entrepreneur, but once I started working in corporate and I was so like, I didn't have a filter. I still often don't have a filter. So watch out what comes out of my mouth today. But like I, uh, so I was, <laughs> I would blurt things out with customers and laugh with them and joke with them. And sometimes in a really maybe inappropriate way, but the customers, I mean, I could usually read them. I was very intuitive, although I didn't know I was intuitive back then. I didn't know I was feeding off their energy and, you know, we were having this little banter and I would get looked down upon because I was too casual maybe with some clients and some customers. <clears throat> And so I, I couldn't, I can only get to like um, assistant manager. And I was actually fine with that because the manager came with a lot of yucky responsibilities like forecasting and budgeting and being responsible for the whole sales thing of the whole, you know, the whole branch. And I'm like, ew, I don't want that. I just want to talk to people, sell people and have a good life right? and get out before they have to do all the paperwork. <laughs> and so there, uh, from there, I went to advertising sales uh, in the local newspaper here in Northern California, Sacramento. And that's where I fell in love with small business owners, you guys. And that's where I, I would just, it would be, I was so sad because they would go out of business all the time. Brick and mortars mostly, right? I would be knocking on doors. Hey, do you want to run an ad? And, you know, they're barely scraping together money to run an ad. And even when they did run an ad, they said, oh, well, I said, well, what do you want to run? And they said, well, we'll just put my business card in the paper. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to put your business card in the paper because nobody cares about your logo or your fax number. So we're going to do <laughs> like they just didn't know how to word the things to get people to come in. Right. They didn't know how to position themselves and how long they said, we'll just run it this week and then we'll see what happens. I'm like, no. I'm not going to take your money for one week in the newspaper because it's going to do you no good unless you're like a half a page with a big, huge sale, right? And a coupon. I mean, that's just not going to work. So I would have to school them. And then I'd be like, when they come in, then you have to do this, 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 and this, right? And so they're like, what? And I would teach them follow-up. I would teach them database management. I would teach them, you know, how to do a lot of things in store promotions that other reps weren't teaching. And uh, that's where I, you know, I was top in sales because I was more consultative, right? And I think a lot of you are consultative with your people, meaning you want to find out their problems. You want to learn about all the things. You want to help them fill those holes and take advantage of the opportunities. And that's what I do with people in their businesses is I see the holes and I want to fill them. 
So if you have a gap between lead generation and getting people to your website and signing up for your email list, ooh, we need to fix that gap because that's you're losing money because we need to, it's not effective, right? Your opt-in page isn't working or your free thing isn't working or you don't have a free thing, right? And so those that's really what I look at with people is filling those holes and then taking advantage of opportunities. You're in a group like this. I know you guys are all in Be Connected opportunities, right? For meeting other people. Are you actually private messaging people? Are you messaging? You know, so it's kind of like you want to run a newspaper ad and you're coming here to this event, but are you doing the in-store promotions that can happen here just in this platform? <clears throat> are you doing the follow-up things that can happen from meeting people and connecting? Are you really doing enough, right? It used to be seven touches, for marketing to after you met somebody and seven touches for follow-up. Now I call it like 28, 28 touches because there's Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, uh, Twitter. There's uh, everybody has like two or three email boxes. A lot of times they have their website contact page. I mean, there's, uh, and the direct, don't forget direct mail and phone, please. Just because there's email and social media now, I think direct mail and phone is still the top two things you can do to stay in touch with the people that you're meeting because hundred percent because the direct mail if you have the right address it's a hundred percent getting opened you guys hundred percent you can't guarantee that with email or social media or anything you can't even guarantee with voicemail anymore you know how many people i called yesterday on the phone like i called about 12 people yesterday and two of no i was three of them had a full email a full voicemail box right like they're not even cleaning out their inbox or their voicemail box it's like, what are you doing? You are missing out on opportunities, right? So I want to help people just make little tweaks in a lot of these different areas, the five areas. And that's what we're going to talk about today, those five areas. <laughs> yes, everyone wants to buy ice cream. I'm just looking at the chat. <laughs> Be consultative. Thank you. Thank you for writing all those notes. Um, I want to share the slide with you that shows those five areas. I'm not going to go through the whole PowerPoint. And then I want to talk about it. Okay, because this is a mastermind. This isn't me lecturing at you for 14 hours or an hour and a half or however long we have. Um, let me just find it. I can't hear you, David, if you're talking. Okay, I think I have to give Chrome permission now that I'm thinking that it looks like. Yeah, I'm just going to share your PowerPoint, so. I know, I have to give Chrome permission and I don't know how to do that. Let's see. Camera continue allowing always black option. And it's not letting me share. Okay. Well, if you want, you could just no. walk through your points and I will uh, feature the system. each point. Yeah. I have to go to system preferences to secure. Yeah. So um, that sounds a little complicated. I don't need to share the slide. Let me just tell you them then. Okay. All and good. Yeah. So there's, I call it the focus framework originally because I had five different things that spelled out focus, but then I've since changed it. I'm still talking about the same thing, but I like this better um, because I developed this talk end of last year. And so the five areas are, I'll do the F O C U P, but the, basically it's five P's pricing, positioning, packaging, promoting, and profiting. So pricing, positioning, packaging, promoting, and profiting. And so just to be fun, I did fair pricing. And fair pricing, did you get all five of those in the chat? Let me just know. Pricing, packaging, positioning. Then promoting, and then profiting. Okay, I trust you're gonna get those in there. And then, so promoting and then profiting, perfect. So fair pricing is how I label it. And fair, fair to you, but also fair to them. Okay, so by fair pricing, I don't mean cheap. I don't mean give them discounts. I don't mean make it really affordable. You don't have to do that because when you make a high-end program, like a 10 or $20,000 thing, some of you I know sell products and maybe that's not something you're focused on, 
But what if it was? What if you could add something? Okay, I love to brainstorm about what else you could sell besides the CBD oil or the, you know, the stem cell product that you have. What else can you sell? Because you can do something else, right? Like Bill's selling services, he could easily have if he's educating people and, you know, helping people. So is Maury and uh, Robert. Yep, definitely, especially with stuff you do. I know real estate is not traditional for even prepaying, right? You have to wait until something sells. So, but in a, you have so many other income streams, it sounds like, right? So that's good. But the fair pricing is push the limits, right? When I tell, when I, when people say, well, how much should I charge for this, my coaching program or this membership or this online training or whatever, I say, charge as much as you can say without stuttering. That's how I price things. As much as you can say without stuttering. I will suggest that it could be this price. Um, or this is probably the price I'm, I usually do feel the price in my body. When someone's talking to me about what they're selling, I can instantly go, boom, this is what I think it should be. And I'm usually a hundred percent on, on what I think it could sell for. All right. And, uh, it, it's, it, but the thing is, if I tell you, oh, your thing is worth $5,000, but you're like, holy cow, I can't imagine getting paid $5,000 for this. And who in the heck is going to pay me $5,000 for this? Then you're not going to sell it, right? Regardless if you spit it out of your mouth, you're not going to believe that it's worth $5,000. So we have to get you to believe that it's worth $5,000. And sometimes that takes a few months. Sometimes it actually takes a couple years. I have clients that have worked with me for five, six, seven years. And they're still like honing their pricing, their skills, they're on the next thing, whatever it is. But like, it, so you can only confidently sell someone something you believe in, that you know is worth the money, that you know is going to support and help and whatever them, right? It's going to transform them in some way. And, but the more you believe that you're worth, the higher you can charge. And every time you get paid a higher price, guess what? Your confidence goes up. And when your confidence goes up, you have more clarity around selling that and the value of that. And then once you get paid that next highest price, whoop, now I think I'm worth this. And so it's just a matter of sometimes there's baby steps. Well, let me inch up my rates $5 an hour. <laughs> sometimes it's I'm going to, you know, when I first started to learn what people were actually getting paid as a coach, this was year three in my business. I actually went to a workshop and I was just local at the time selling stuff. And I want to say I was like $75 an hour, which was somewhat pricey for a marketing person locally. If you think of other people, you know, locally, right? But that that's all I could say without stuttering at the time. And then I went to this workshop and they're like, and I saw people making hundreds of dollars an hour doing the same thing. And they weren't even as good as me. And I'm like, oh, so I immediately came back and guess what? I was like $200 an hour immediately overnight because I had the confidence because I had the proof. I was seeing people get paid. I felt like I was worth it. I went back six months later to that workshop. I came back. I was probably $350 an hour. And then I went to $500 an hour and now I'm $1,000 an hour. And I feel like that's good. Like, I feel like I'm good. <laughs> but sometimes I'll give people deals at 350 or 500, depending on where they're at. Okay. And depending what I'm doing, like with the publishing stuff or whatever. But <clears throat> so I have the flexibility to charge whatever I want. But I believe wholeheartedly that an hour of me with uh, when I can really look at everything you're doing and I can give you advice will make you thousands and thousands of dollars. And I have no problem charging $1,000 an hour. Do you see what I'm saying? So fair pricing is where you're at. And trust me, there's billions of people on the planet, billions. And all of us just need this many to buy what we've got. And so you just have to talk to more people. If you're getting a lot of no's at the price you want to charge, you have to talk to more people. You're not talking to enough people. Katrina. That makes I sense. Yes. Can I, can let's I talk about it? Yeah. Let's talk about pricing. Okay. Yeah. Cause I think this is, Honestly, having um, over 2,000 people on this network and having doing a lot of one-to-ones, talking to people like even like Bill or, you know, I think 
pricing and getting the right price or getting a price and the whole all the issues around that are is something that we all can work on we i'm including myself in the equation right so it's not something that uh and and i think what i would take away from part of what you said it's not what you think they will pay it's what is really the right. fair price so let's 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 engage with this this piece a bit because i think this is one of the most yeah. valuable pieces you and i talked about it even on the podcast with people thinking well they can't pay that and you don't even know right you so that's know. That's I part can't of tell it. you how many people say that to me. Oh, well, I don't think people will pay it. Well, how many people have you talked to about that price? <laughs> They're like, nobody or one. And they said, no. I'm like, well, then you have to talk to another 50 people. Like so, you're just so, playing. Yeah. Song. So let's ask the question. <laughs> what uh, to, to those that are here, what are your challenges around pricing as you see them? And again, this is safe space. Just. Be honest. And I know some of them, you know, I have a set price for your product. So CBD oil is only so much, Nate. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I get it. But what else could you do for money? And you don't have to charge by the hour. You can package stuff. But we have to think of how to create that package with an hourly value of some sort, typically. So Robert, either raise morning. your hand. Yeah, either raise your hand or open your mic, guys. And uh, or you can put it in the chat and I'll I'll share it in the chat. But just what kind of challenges do you have or see with people that you engage with in the group on pricing? Go ahead, Bill. Well, I've, I've always been taught and I believe that uh, first of all, if you well, years and years ago, my dad told me if you, if you need to learn how to sell, if you never sell anything else, you have to sell yourself. And uh, I've always believed that, I've always practiced that. And one thing I learned was that you have to know or feel like you know uh, what you're worth. Yes. Uh, and if you know what you're worth, what you have to offer that is something somebody uh, can use, then it's pretty easy to sell that to people to say, I, I know what I'm talking about. And, uh, you know, I, and by, just to clarify, uh, it's not that I don't like money. It's just that at the present time, I have enough to be comfortable that I don't need a whole lot more. Uh, the way the stock market's going, that may change. <laughs> well, one thing I say when people say they're comfortable is what if you live till you're 105? Do you have plenty of money to I live have that? Last, the last time I checked it, uh, right after the, uh, the market went down this last week, was I have enough to last me till I'm 97. Okay. So, well, I hope to God. I think, you know, <laughs> depending on what happens, money. unless the federal government collapses or the stock market totally collapses. So, uh, not also, I, I have two books that I've written that are on Amazon and Barnes and Noble, and, and those uh, are, are priced at what I think is a reasonable level. Uh, and anything that comes in from that in the way of royalties, I can reinvest that in something. I uh, do something with it. So uh, money has value. Uh, that's just not the primary thing I'm looking for at this point in my life. Because sure. uh, I get it. The, the but keep in mind that I that I was drawing a salary. My goal was to put enough away uh, after we got my daughter through school and graduate school and got her married uh, for my wife and I to live on uh, yeah. without needing uh, additional income on a regular basis and right. we were able to achieve that and then uh, she passed away so i'm living on both our retirement uh yeah. savings you and might so find I'm another sugar in that respect for for the time being but that doesn't mean that uh i, I don't value what i have to offer and uh if, if i needed to i could start charging for it yes and just a thought. What if you meet another love and you want to travel with people? I don't know. I'm just throwing stuff out. And also about your books, um, yeah. relying on Amazon to sell them is one way that you make a very slim amount of money. But you could also put it on a website. 
you could actually speak and sell yep. books in the back end from your website, which will be more money in your pocket. You can also create a talk, a signature talk around your book, perhaps, or a program. There's additional income. You can automate some of that to where they buy the book. So I'm just saying, like, there's there's things you could do without a lot of effort oh, yeah, yeah. that could bring in more money that you can then invest or do other things with. Yeah. Well, one of the things that I learned very well within the last couple of years, actually, Bill, that could help, um, and you triggered it, um, by the way, that's my new podcast title, Triggered. Um, but anyway, uh, you triggered it by the, the concept of at the stage that we're at, just because you have enough money to eat and pay the bills and maybe move down the road, we could all increase, and this is the term, our having level. Mm -hmm. And our having level can increase and think about the possibilities if it's not feeding the family or paying the rent, what could you do yeah. with yeah. that additional money? What kind of value can you provide? Yeah. Um if you have the opportunity, right? And the only way you have the opportunity is to make more money. So that's that's what that's what my coaches that I'm paying keep beating me up with. So I, I'm it's I'm that's in my head too. Uh, so, so go ahead, Robbie D. Go ahead, Robbie D. Open your mic. I'm a lot like Dave. I guess I'm retired, but I'm on my fourth career, and what I enjoy doing is making money and bringing people along with me so everybody makes money. I'm in real estate. I'm developing. It's the challenges out there that keep me going. The money is always nice, but if I can help other people achieve their goals, make money while I'm making money, and my greenhouse communities, that's a project of love to, you know, give people something they don't have, a place to grow foods, vegetables, a different way to entertain themselves through social gardening. That's a love, but I have figured out a way to make a lot of money, and I'm trying to bring people with me to That's help great. them make money. That's and great. It's the challenges. It's like you reach a point in life where you got enough to say grace over, but you can always use a little extra more. And if you can help other people achieve those goals, that's a win-win situation for everybody. Yeah. It's win-win-win, right? For the planet too. So yeah, it's uh, that's something a lot of people are really looking at at being interested in. So depending on your model, right, that's practice, that's packaging. So we're I mean, with that. I have a website called greenhousecommunities.com. You should take a look at it because it will be national one day. Well, just an FYI, it is international right now because the website is international, right? Yeah. <laughs> we're already right. international. <laughs> it will be international because there's nothing like this in the whole world. Hey, Ricky Jean, did you have any comments around pricing? I, uh, if, you, if you don't, I have some for you. But I mean, when you talk about your musical gigs and those kinds of things and how to price your services, services oftentimes, Casey's got another challenge and I might have her when she talks about pricing. She's Katrina, like you said, or Zip with the CBD, where you're selling a product and that product has a price and you can't get creative there. Uh, so we'll talk about that in a second. But Ricky is a pure service guy and then he has components that have kind of set prices that people understand. But Ricky, when it comes to whether it's your, your music gigs or the services you provide, why don't you engage or give us your challenges with that well i guess it uh, it depends on uh, where you're actually performing there seems to be like set prices for certain uh industries and of course the worst ones are restaurant and bars yeah i try to uh, stay away from those 
the most profitable ones are house concerts, private uh, concerts, uh, parties, you know, things like that are the, are the most profitable. And just recently, I ran across an opportunity and I got signed up with uh, the HEB Central Market stores and they have cafes and they they pay twice or maybe two or three times as much as a regular restaurant or bar for uh, music in their uh, cafe, wine bar, patio kind of thing. And so a lot of times in the music world, it's almost like uh, there's collusion in the bars and the, and the restaurants. They all know what they can get away with and everybody sort of falls in line. And the strange thing about it is they're paying the same thing they did in, in the eighties. It's crazy, you know? Uh -huh. So that's kind of not a good, not a good marketplace there for regular bars and restaurants. So Being Katrina, yeah, right. well, hang, hang, yeah. hang on just a second. I, I, I really want, I can tell Katrina's, um, she's got some thoughts around that, Ricky. And, and the story behind that isn't that important. It's more just, you know, kind of how do you deal with that, Katrina? Yeah, well, the musician, I mean, the, I have somebody who used to fly and go do private parties and she was a guitar player and she would do mostly acoustic. And people would pay her thousands of dollars plus travel because and, and then she got some connections with Hollywood and some of the big bands and stuff like that. Um, so I think a lot of that is who you know, but also how you position yourself. So we were talking about positioning as one of the things mm -hmm. is you have to have a wow website. You have to have demos and all kinds of things and really be technically inclined. You don't have to be it, but you have to have people who make you shine online. So you have to look like the rock star online. That's how you get paid more and get more interest and then have the right SEO and the right systems in the back end of the website too. So website, social media, and what you look like is probably the number one thing that you, if you improved on, I don't know what your website looks like, but um, if you improved on it, you could probably double or triple your rates and get bigger paying gigs um, but then when you reach out to well-known people and they see you, then you already look like a rock star. See, so that, I don't know, maybe we could look at your website. Uh -huh. This is positioning. I was just looking at the greenhouse community website and I have some thoughts for you if you want them, but like, I, I don't want to step on any toes, but I'm definitely see some gaps, right? Those holes right. that are missing in that particular website. So just saying that's, that's a positioning thing. But one, yeah. one of the things that they talked about with me at, at, at the HEB Central Market thing, mm -hmm. they went to my website and went to my YouTube channel and said, oh, yes, that's what we want. Okay, good. But uh, perfect. And definitely get in with any of those groups that um, are more directory oriented that can you can get found easier for sure. So get into communities. Uh, and But you have to network. And a lot of artists don't like to do necessarily the marketing and sales stuff, right? As much that's general, maybe you do, mm -hmm. but typically that's, that's what holds them back is they're not willing to go make that call or send that email or connect with somebody on LinkedIn or whatnot <clears throat> and be a little assertive, right? It's not about being salesy. It's about being assertive for what you want. If you want certain things, you got to be assertive. You have to go after and get it. Mm -hmm. and the, other business, the other business that I deal in is, uh, uh, since 2010 is merchant services, credit card processing. Yeah. And of course, you know, that, that pricing is very, uh, yeah, that's pretty set pricing, give or take a percentage or so, yeah. or like half a percentage or whatever. I have a friend who does it and she does really well because she hangs out in entrepreneurial worlds. So you're here in an entrepreneurial place. Yeah. I mean that not a lot of people know a lot of merchant services people, they go with Stripe or Square or all these other ones, right? Or PayPal. Um, but they don't understand that when they go with you, they don't pay more. They get just better service and better options. So that's what you have to really stress and impress on people. And those free consults and free comparisons is the number one lead generator for that, right? So not be promoting. <laughs> Right. But getting um, enough of the entrepreneur.
for in our communities. So if you really want to promote that business, it would be networking in places where there's 60 to 100 people every week on the calls. Um, you wouldn't have to leave your house at this point in these days. You can if you like the in-person, but you could just attend calls, be a merchant services, go to the places where you can do a little network commercial like we did in the beginning, 45 second, you know, who are you, what you do, and people go boing if you say the right things. So that would be packaging and promoting is the thing that's coming out of your mouth when you have 30 seconds. If it's not the thing that makes people go, I want that or I want to know more, then you're not going to get the business, mm -hmm. right? Um, let me let me ask Maury. Maury, um, I I'm reading a little bit of body language on the thing. I'm I'm curious as to what you're pro you're you're thinking hard. So tell me what you're processing around this topic. Well, I sell like I don't offer a service. I offer products. Mm -hmm. So I either do custom products which are priced very highly, or traditional systems, which I have plenty of, I have 23 different systems currently available, 17 that will be launching in the next year at some point, and 45 that I'm working on, all of which have unique technology that's not available anywhere else. So generally speaking, I used to have the attitude that I don't know how many of you know the original Star Trek series, but the doctor would consistently say, damn it, Jim, I'm a doctor, not a marketer. I'm a doctor, not a writer. I'm a doctor, not this. Mm -hmm. And I went overboard with that. And I realized I was ripping myself and potential customers and consumers off as well. So what I did was, because my passion is my science, I really don't like marketing. I really don't like a lot of what you guys are talking about as far as I don't like doing it. I don't like having anything to do with it. So what I've been doing is over the last three years, I've been working with uh, potential partners who actually do this for a living. Everything I don't like doing, I find someone else to do it for me. They like what they're doing. I hate it. Let them do what they're good at. I'll do what I'm good at and we'll partner. Yeah. So I don't even worry about pricing. I let my partners do all that. And Beautiful. That's good. Yeah, promoting and profiting. That's part of that process is really making sure you know what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, and you outsource and delegate to the weaknesses. You don't just not do them. You have to put the right, but it, the key is putting the right person in charge. Because a lot of times, a lot of entrepreneurs will just, oh, I need a VA. I need a social media person. And they'll get anybody in there. And then it doesn't really bring them effective results and customers so it's really knowing how to hire the right person for you and and then how to teach them what to do because you have to be high level you have to know how your business all works and all the marketing and stuff right high level it doesn't mean you have to do it all but you have to understand the concept I, behind it. Mm -hmm. sorry i'm not even doing that oh i, I get people who, do, who i can partner with so i'm not looking for vas i'm not looking for people to do the minutia I'm looking for people who are big time people. They're well connected. They have lots of money. They have lots of success under their belt already. And they have the people that they already know that know how to do all this. There's no training involved. They already deal with professionals okay. and they're the ones who deal with all of that. I don't have to deal with that. All I'm looking for is the potential partner who has the wherewithal and the skill sets that I'm looking for. They find all the people whether they're high powered people that are necessary with tons of connections or whether they're VAs, yeah. they do all of that. I have nothing to do with it. I have no desire to do anything to do with it. I firmly believe that what you want, you want, and you can have it regardless of what anyone else might say. So my belief is that I don't have to do any of the garbage I don't want to do that needs to get done because I can find someone else who believes in what I do. They yeah. see how easy it is to get out to anywhere in the planet, how necessary it is, and they will use their motivation and their skill sets to fill in the holes that I have. That's yeah. beautiful. And that's beautiful, except most entrepreneurs so d don't find that person or they don't believe they can afford that person. I have, six, I have six sets of those people right now, and I'm having a meeting with another one, a potential who worked with Tony Robbins for 12 years uh, this afternoon. So again, don't, I think it's a mistake when someone thinks they can't do it. It was nice. You did it, Maury, but you can't, or I can't do it. I think your belief system creates your reality. And if you believe you can do something, you will always find a way to be able to do it. Agreed. 
Okay, so I'm going to uh, take back control here and give it to back to Katrina. Katrina, I want you. I just put up the the next number two, which is packaging. So yeah, uh, we, we there's a lot. We could spend a lot of time on pricing, and we and for sure, if you want to, after this mastermind follow up, have a one to one with uh, with Katrina, all that stuff. That's all there. But let's let's talk about packaging, Katrina. Yes, good. And I've you know dribbled in a few things here and there of what you guys are saying and I'll put the contact in again but the so packaging is looking for those other income streams and or packaging your expertise uh either or repurposing your stuff right so if you have a book like um bill then it could be that you take what's in the book and then you put that into a course or a membership I mean that's just one idea Right. So packaging. So what else can you sell within your realm of uh, what you're doing? Mm -hmm. So for Casey, for example, you have sell products. Right. And but what is I, I would see if I was one on one with you, I'd be like, well, what's your background? What's your skill set? What are your experiences? How well do you do with um, finding people who want that product? Are you really good with follow up? Are you really good with other things? Are you really good with somehow managing your business. I mean, those are other things you could teach other network marketers, for example. So I'm just brainstorming just out there and happy to see what other skill sets you might have that would go hand in hand. Maybe you are a medical doctor in the background. I don't know. And you can tell us, of course, but if you were, like I have a client who I just met and she's a medical doctor and now she's sharing about this product and so that makes her more credible, right? But also she can coach and consult people and so charge for her time um, in addition to sell the product. So I'm just, those are ways to package and then how to do it so that you have multiple price points because most people, um, not everybody on here, but most people who uh, sell stuff you're, you want to have a high price because if you don't have a high priced product service, then you're never going to sell a high priced product or service. Frankly, if you don't have a $10,000 program, you'll never sell a $10,000 program, right? That doesn't mean you you're going to sell it every day or it has to be the number one thing you offer. But if you don't have one, you seriously won't sell one. Um, so you have a higher one, you have the one most people buy, might be in the middle, maybe you have a couple in the middle, maybe you have a DIY option, maybe you have a, a group option, maybe you have a one-on-one -on -one thing, maybe you have a, a low-end try me out, dip my toe in, you know, like I have a $27 training, I have a bunch of $27 trainings on my website, but I also have a $25,000 program and I have a whole bunch of stuff in between, right? So just how can you think differently about what your expertise is, what your product and service is, and how it can be put into other packages, so to speak. That's kind of what packaging is. And if you don't want to, we don't have to mastermind around every single one, but if anybody has anything, you can popcorn and say, and then we can move on or what, if not. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Anybody have any thoughts on packaging or offering different Levels you of have questions about what questions. you could do. I'm happy to do some laser coaching. Like, what if you did this? And what if you did that? Anybody? One of the things I do is I do sell packaging boxes, tapes, and I sell packaging equipment. Okay. There you go. Perfect. So you've got an add on. Perfect. And anything else? When I'm marketing my houses for rent. Say I have two closets in the bedroom. One of them is my is a shoe closet. And you have no idea how many people come to see the house just because I have a shoe closet. Love it. Shoe closets don't make a difference. <laughs> but if you call one of them a shoe closet, people flock to the house. Love it. So again, yes. when I'm doing my rentals, it's a matter of how I package it. How I display my houses with pictures, with yes. verbs, words. Uh huh. And I technically, I would say that's more promoting and your creative promoting, right? But mm. yes, I mean, that, getting creative on all of that is good. I don't care what you call it. <laughs> Casey, did you have something? 
Yeah, I, I'm loving what I'm hearing and I would um, really like, to, I hope your website is uh, in the chat because I think I'd like to take advantage of some of your expertise. Uh, I'm so brand new to this whole industry and it's like, wow, lots of good stuff. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, we'll have we'll have the links. They'll be up in the show notes. They'll be uh, we'll get them we'll get them up there. I've got I've got actually I the tabs are there, um, and you can just click on those and come back to them later. Um, that Katrina has posted, so she did post those in the chat. Um, just click on the active links and then come back to us. Um, anybody else before we move on? Okay, go ahead, Katrina. you okay. Katrina, you're back. And I'll put the, I have a free trainings page on my website that has a couple webinars that talk about a lot of this stuff more in depth. So if you want to check that out, Casey, that would be where to go. Um, okay. So then it's positioning. Positioning, I mentioned briefly, is what do you look like from the outside looking in with people who don't know you whatsoever, mm -hmm. right? And do they trust you? Are you credible? Do you have proof? Do you have a solid proven thing or do you have uh, like a professional appearance not only in your zoom room which is critical I think all of you have a pretty good professional appearance for sure um, but some people I mean you've seen it I'm sure people are sitting on their bed on with their laptop with a t-shirt on right mm -hmm. and then they're trying to claim themselves as some expert that they want you to pay right I'm like Meh. I wouldn't do that. Like, that's not a good way to position yourself. I mean, because you never know who's watching, especially on Zoom. It could be your next best client, high-end person. It could be someone that's going to ask you to speak. It could be, uh, you know, someone who, I don't know, who could introduce you to a big person that could really catapult your business. So you never know who's looking. I also look at your website is the most important tool that any one of us have. You cannot rely on a page on another person's website. Like uh, if you're a parent company, right, with a product that has just a page where you send people to blah, 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 dot com forward slash my name. That is nothing. That is no, you're not in control of that. You, you, it doesn't make you credible. It makes you barely in business in my mind these days with a website. You have to have your own web presence. I don't care what you do and it needs to be professionally built. Please don't build it yourself unless you're a web designer and a creative designer and a marketing person because it needs the marketing copy and the right look and feel. It doesn't have to be expensive, however, okay? So I don't tell people to go spend $10,000 on a website because that's ridiculous, um, uh, you know, but it is a good, it, it's your probably your, most important investment in your business is your website mm -hmm. these days. And you can get a good one for like two to $3,000. But if you think you're going to get a really good rocking website for 500 bucks, it's, it's very slim. Like you got to find somebody who's really, and, and then you got to get some people to look at it to make sure that, cause I look at it with eyeballs from your ideal client. So <laughs> I put myself in position of your ideal client. And who are you, what you do? And I had a client recently who was a menopause coach for women and it was a guy. Okay. And he had amazing looking website. I mean, you would have thought, oh, this is great. But when I, I'm the ideal client for him, 50 something with uh, hormones. Right. And I went onto his website and I'm like, well, you don't have the, like, I don't know if I believe you. And I don't really, there's no video here. And I don't know what you sound like. And if I trust you, because I haven't heard your energy. And then I took his quiz and it was like this, I'm all, I need more information to answer this question. And I don't see this. And he was like dumbfounded, right? And he's, because he had hired these guys, these funnel guys to create his website. Instead of hiring a woman, his ideal target market to show him what he really needed to do, he made a couple quick tweaks on his website, added a few things that I suggested, and boom, people are signing up for his email. And they were already there. They just weren't signing up because there wasn't enough trust, credibility, connection, and wording that made me, the 50-something-year-old woman, comfortable with him talking about hormones. Get it? So sometimes you just don't see what you don't see. And so if anybody wants to talk about positioning, I'm happy to look at websites and give you some ideas and thoughts on what I might suggest. 
<laughs> awesome. Don't ask if you don't really want to know the answer, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we run into that all the time, right? Um, I, I've, I'm always having people that have questions that they really don't want my answer. So, yeah, I can relate to that. Ricky. Anything okay. else on positioning? Ricky, you want to go ahead? You just open your mic. Well, uh, I have uh, noticed that when I started putting uh, videos, especially on my first page, but I, I actually put videos on every page of my website. Uh, because I have uh, talked to people who said that uh, uh, that you know that enhances everything when when you have a, a video, and in my case, uh, when people look at uh, and I can put a video on this that's not me, it's just a recording. That's not as good as me, you know, being on there, and and when that happens, all of a sudden uh, the uptick really jumps when there's videos. Oh, hundred percent. And video is the, I mean, YouTube is one of the biggest search engines. Do you think Google's is the biggest search engine? No, it's YouTube. And so you have to have video hundred percent. I have a video on almost every single page of my website, almost every single page of my 200 plus page website. I have a video. Why? Because some people just want to hear what this page is about instead of reading. You have to have both in my mm. mind. Yeah. So good. I mean, Great. I was looking at your website and it looks good. The singer songwriter one. The only thing I don't see on the homepage is a way to get on your email list. It says subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook, but you're not getting people on your email list, which is where you're going to have control. You don't have control on their YouTube. They might not see your videos as they come out. You don't have control on your Facebook page, especially the page. Once somebody likes the page, they hardly ever go back to the page. Okay. Unless it's like something interactive with them. Um, but you got to get them on your list. So can you give them, you know, a whole song for free if they sign up for your email list? Or can you give them, I don't know, like access to a new release once a month or something like that, right? To, if they stay subscribed, something, something to get them on the email list. Yeah, that's the number one thing I see that's missing just right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Good job. Thank you for that input. That's 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 high value. Same thing uh, for the merchant services, by the way. <laughs> like, like you want to have it immediately, like, hey, submit uh, or let us know what you're paying and or, or click here let, or let us know what you're paying on your percentage and see if we can save you money. I'm going to put I mean, a lot of people will put their name and email in and a little bit more information to see if you can save them money. Right. So how can you attract somebody to give you their email on that homepage of the merchant services by what they're most what they're most interested in, which is saving money on their credit card processing? I know I pay credit card fees. I get it. But do I want to save money? Yes. hundred percent. It's the cost to do in business. The credit card fees are the cost to do in business. They are. So I don't usually much pay attention to them. But if someone says they can save me a lot of money if I'm using Stripe or whatever, then I'm going to pay attention. Like you're going to save me a couple hundred maybe per month instead of that's that's worth it. That's a few well, hours of my VA time that I can pay. One thing one thing that I I wish that you could uh, address is uh, in in a business where there is a lot of, uh, you know, competition for price. I see people stand out because they're promising something else besides price. And one of those things is uh, I went to a website myself and noticed that this particular company was specializing in all kinds of integration with the POS systems, no matter what kind of yes. point of that's sale good. system it was. Well, that's going to be a little bit more pricey than just how much can you save me because I they want you. it to work. And they want it to be reliable. Yes, I agree. And once you get them on the email list, you can educate them, right? Yeah. You can That's, them yeah, and educate exactly. them with a lot of those points and say, I know sometimes people are attracted to other companies that do what I do because of X, Y, Z. And let me just tell you, that's how that you pay more and da, da, da. And I can do that, da, da, da. That's, you know what I mean? So it's, 
it's a process. So you have to think of your website and social media as a process you're taking people through in order to want to raise their hand. So along the way, you have to get them excited to raise their hand to talk with you or click and buy or click and sign up. And so that process is sometimes pretty lengthy, depending on what you're selling. Mm -hmm. You can't give up with one email or whatever. I'm like, it's 28 touches, right? Think of how much you have to communicate with people. Okay, Christina. Christina, I I, no, I promised you I would be your wingman today. So um, we, I want to move us to promoting. So I have now. to say one thing about Robert's uh, community garden website. Can I tell you one thing? Go for it. Is it do you want to know, Robert? <laughs> Robbie D, do you want to know? Probably the does. biggest thing. Anytime yes, I look yes. at a website, anytime I look at a website, who is behind this website? You have an about page, our story, but no pictures. I don't know who this is. You're not saying naming names. There's no real trust on this website because I don't know who's behind it. It could be anybody with an email and a phone number. I have no idea where you are. I have no idea who you are. You're, you know what I mean? Like, so that is the biggest distrust thing about your website. No, I don't. I don't know what you mean. When you, you say there's I mean? nobody behind it. Yeah, because you have an Our Story page. I even looked on the Contact Us page. It says, Our Mission at Greenhouse Communities. Greenhouse Communities does this. Greenhouse Communities does that. Mm. I have no idea that Robert Denenberg is behind it. And this is why you're passionate about it. And this is why you're doing it. And it's personal yeah. to you. And Great. you want to make an impact. And this is your picture. And you live in Ohio. I don't know these things. Therefore, I don't trust. I get 100%. You. Yes. Yeah. So so really, Robbie D, you could take your story. You, know, you Robbie did a podcast and told his story and then talked about his passion. And some portion of that messaging needs to show up on your website so that you can get to trust. Because remember, as we always talk about, no like is great, but trust is where it's at. So let's uh, let's help Katrina get to uh, number four, which is promoting. <laughs> okay. <I got> ideas. <laughs> promoting, we could be here for three days. Like I've done full <laughs> on events for three days, all about marketing. And um, what I can tell you about promoting and marketing is you have to pick the lane that you're most comfortable with and that feels authentic to you. You don't have to do the 400 things that everybody tells you to do. You can keep it very simple. Um, for example, there's, I, I think networking and speaking, like what I'm doing today is speaking, but also networking, right? Mm -hmm. Coming to a Zoom call, or whether it's in person or online, networking and speaking are my two favorite things to do. Some of you or some other people might hate it. You don't like to talk about yourself. You're not comfortable sharing what it is you do. You don't know the words. So you wanna hide behind the computer doing social media <laughs> connecting and posting and maybe some videos, but those are one way because you're just spitting it out and hoping people comment and watch it, right? And so the social media environment, I say is a different lane than networking and speaking in my mind. So now you can like both, but it is really, if you really want to be, like I spend about 10% of my time on social media and 90% of my time on speaking and, and networking, you can do the opposite. That is fine. But you got to know exactly what to do and how to do it and what to say and how to be frequent and all this stuff when you're on social media or when you're on the speaking and networking world. There's also publicity um, getting on TV. I've been on a dozen times. Publicity is great. It doesn't always bring the paying clients, however, right? But it's great for credibility and putting on your website and having people believe you. So there's lots of uh, ways to promote yourself. The key is the messaging that you're using. And sometimes you have to keep tweaking it. And sometimes you say different things in different areas too. Like at this group, I might say something different than another group that I'm in, which is maybe all women, right? Because of the, the energy in the group. Also, it depends on who's in the room. Sometimes I change my commercial based on who I know is in the room, right? I change what I'm saying and leading with in that commercial. 
Same thing goes for social media. There's all kinds of groups and stuff that we might be involved with, right? When I go into one group that allows promotion, I might just go, hey, I'm having this event, da, 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 you should come. And this is where it's gonna help you. Um, other groups don't allow that at all. So how do I communicate without being salesy? Well, I have to go in and help people. Hey, you know, and showcase, oh, I just met with so-and-so today. Here's our picture. And, and I have to go in and comment on people. So it's a little bit more time consuming. So those are some things with promoting. Where do you guys want to take the discussion? Well, I think that's, I think that's good, really, Katrina. I mean, the whole concept, anybody, um, we, we're, we have about uh, 10 minutes. So um, we don't need stories, but any, any comments one or thing, thoughts? Uh, one thing I've been taught about marketing is, well, first of all, make sure you know who your target market is and focus on them. And the second part of it is to uh, do, try and learn uh, from your focus, uh, from your target market, what it is that they really want. So what you end up doing is selling them what they already want rather than trying to convince them that they need what you have yes. to, to give them. Uh -huh. uh, in my case, I've, I've struggled with that because I don't, mine is not limited to uh, uh, age or ethnicity or uh, uh, location or anything like that. It's just anybody that's interested in improving their life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that makes it it's hard to narrow that down somewhat. So uh, that's that's what I'm working with on that is. Uh, and then how do you how do you what you have to do then is get into uh, whatever media, uh, whatever areas they are involved in and uh, and talking in, chatting in to find out what it is they're really looking for. Yes. Uh, and then you can target your your marketing to okay you, you, this is what you need you say you need or what you're looking for let me let me tell you how i can help you with that love that yeah you got lucky because you had a marketer as a wife right like my husband does that too he can repeat back to me sometimes things i've said on the calls <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. Yeah. And your messaging. So yes, what they want, you will not sell people something they don't need. Yeah. They don't feel like they need um, unless they see a value in it. Right. And so some, and another thing with the sales, which is into the profiting piece is positioning that um, it's, it's so most people sell the benefits right? Well, it's 10 calls and this, you get the recordings or it's, you know, this product, you're going to get this and this, you're going to get three packets of this and da, 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 da. Um, instead of selling the benefits or the tangibles, right? You want to sell the transformation. And so most people spend, sorry, my dog's barking, 90% of the time on selling the tangible stuff about whatever it is they're selling and 10% on, oh, it's going to help change your life right? Or it's going to help you get out of pain or it's going to whatever, whatever. And instead I would flip it to 90% of the time, talk about the transformation. And sometimes people are like, okay, here's my credit card. And, and when does it start? Or when will I get it? Right? Like they'll, it's very, once they are sold on the transformation, then it doesn't really matter sometimes what the deliverables are or the tangibles because they're already know that it's going to help them. So those are some things weaving right into the profiting as well. Okay. Yeah. So let's so talk them, about um, them what they want and profiting. give them what they need. So sometimes we sell them, Oh, you want the, you want to make money in your business. You want to da, 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 get into this program and I'm going to show you how. And then once they get in it, I'm also going to tell you about this, this, and this that you don't necessarily think you need, but you do. Ha ha ha. And I'm going to teach it to you in this program now that you're in. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. that's so funny. No, I, in, in that same vein, another thing that I learned uh, back when I was working for engineering firms, uh, when you're trying to sell your services, is it's much easier to sell additional services to an existing client than to try and sell anything to a, it a is. client that yes. you've never dealt with before. So yes. once you once you have a client and you have other things you can offer them, it's easier to upsell to them or to sell them. Now, do you all are you also interested in this? So, 
Which is why you want to build the list of people mm -hmm. and continue nurturing. Even after you got them on the list, you have to really continue. It's already a trust level built first. Mm -hmm. So we also do this. Which are you interested in that? Mm -hmm. Yep. What else do you guys have around all this stuff? Any other thoughts or questions or? I have one. Go ahead, Ricky. You know, you, you uh, talked about adding the uh, uh, sign up for my email. Yeah. Did you know that in the, I guess you know this, that in the uh, networking world, a lot of people will up front say, do not put us on your email list. That's one of the rules of uh, network meetings. Unless I specifically ask you or you agree to it. So of if course. you put people on email list without them asking to do it, uh, which is your, your point was good about offering something for them to sign up. But sometimes people think email lists are gold and sometimes they're like the hangman. Sure. Well, you never want to just, ca you know, capture people's email addresses from the chat of any call or business cards from a whatever event and throw them into an email. Yet people do it all the time. They also will cultivate um, emails from LinkedIn and then they'll add you to the, the email list. Drives me absolutely crazy. I've been teaching it for 25 years how not to do that. But there's new people in the world, in the networking world all the time, and they will inevitably still do it until they are taught and shown why. Nowadays, you can get caught as a spammer. And so they will actually spam you on your email list. And then your email address becomes this negative thing. And that's always goes into spammer trash, right? Which is why you see sometimes people have to change their email address because that old email now is a spam email, right? So what I'm talking about is the attraction. So you have to entice people to come to your website and go get the free download. And so it has to be juicy. It can't just be, well, you want to get my newsletter? Because who? how many of you want a newsletter? Nobody. We want something tangible that's going to... Uh, that they can download and try you out or experience you in some way, right? So that's why I put that free trainings link in my in the chat, right? There's eight different things on there that you could potentially sign up for. You could sign up for a free audio training about what to do on your website. You could sign up for the eight secrets to consistent uh, cash flow uh, webinar. You could sign up for something about speaking or books or a call with me. It's all on that page. People can pick and choose. Sometimes people go and sign up for five things on that page all at one time. And so therefore they're self-selecting. So you have to have different options for people that want what you've got and in ways that they are willing to give you your email for downloading those things. So I say a variety of things, not just one freebie, have multiple freebies if you can in different ways or different topics to attract those different types of customers. So let me ask you this, Katrina, and then we'll, we'll close it out with this, this question on profiting. Uh, one of the things that I constantly hear from this group and from all of my networking is how can I profit? If I give away free stuff, I want you to comment on that as we close out. And then I want you to remind people. Uh, and by the way, this has been awesome. Thank you. I so appreciate you getting up at 730 in the morning, your time. I, 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 for me, that that's a huge investment. And uh, I, I do dealt with groups like that. But but tell me, answer that question. And then I want you to remind us how we can follow up with you. Yeah. Well, I'm cutting off at two today, so I, I am leaving early just because, right? Okay, good. Yeah. That's <laughs> so a good balance my, for your ideal day. I right. set boundaries. Beautiful. I'm like, oh, I have to get up early for this one? Okay, then I'm going to get off at two when I have to pick up my kid. And right. um, I forgot the question. Say the question one more time. The question time. really is, if you're giving away a lot of free stuff, oh, how, yeah. does that, how does that sync with number five, which is profiting? Well, I'll tell you, if you don't give away free stuff, then they're not experiencing you, which means they're probably not going to buy anyways. So people these days have been, lot, almost everybody's been burned by something they bought online. Almost everybody. And also a lot of people have not been so happy with things they've even bought when they knew somebody. So they are much more skeptical than they were 
10 years ago, 20 years ago. And I think it's just a means to an end. Now, your free thing needs to be good. It needs to not be some uh, little silly thing. I mean, it needs to be meaty. And they need to get to know, like, and trust you in that thing. Or they're not coming to a phone call. And most of us need a phone call in order to sell people into other things. So if it's a click and buy situation, they're just not going to click and buy if there's not enough trust. I tell you, have you, you've seen, I know you've probably been taken like me from Facebook to this infomercial, like an ad and you click on it and there's an infomercial. I tell you, I've sat and watched one that was 90 minutes one time. Yeah, it was about health, right? And I was just so fascinated as a marketer to watch what they were doing to me as I'm watching it. And I couldn't stop watching it. I was wondering how long is this going to go? Because, you know, they're never ending videos. You can't see the timer on the bottom and you have no idea. <laughs> and so it's just hilarious sometimes. Look at it as a, as a fun process, right? And while I'm talking about that too, the, I'm also an anti-nicher, by the way. I don't believe you should niche down into this one little thing. What I niche is the that I look for people who are hungry to make more money, highly motivated to do what I'm telling them to do, and believe they're unstoppable and what they have is totally going to impact the world. Mm -hmm. So that is my niche. I don't care if it's a man, a woman, a 20-year-old, a 70-year-old, or doesn't matter. Bec and doesn't matter what they're selling. So watch your niching too. Sometimes you have to cast a wider net to really figure out who's going to rise to the top of who is the ideal person to work with you. And so I say that to people, especially in the first few years of their business, because they're told, oh, you have to niche. Are you, you know, between 40 and 60 years old? And oh, I'm like, ah. So I'm just throwing that out there in case somebody needed to hear it. <laughs> So uh, awesome. Let's give Katrina a hand before we go any further. This has been really, really good. Katrina, I, I uh, kudos. You know, again, this was our kickoff to doing this on Tuesdays in the morning. I know that at least I'm, I was blessed and, and I'm awake now and ready to go. Maury, thank you uh, for, for being here as well. I posted in the uh, featured here, the bit jumpstart your biz quiz.com because this would be, uh, in my opinion, after looking at some of your things, good place to start to say, oh, I don't need any of that stuff. Because here's one of the things that we always talk about in this mastermind is just because you've heard it before, just because you you understand what Katrina's talking about, just, to, just because you have a way of processing it, if you're not doing anything with it and not taking action on it, then it isn't going to serve you, right? So it's back to your question of, pricing versus giving stuff away. You know, they're not going to do business with you or you're not going to get down the path. So take that step. Katrina, anything else you want to you want to share or make sure we don't miss? There are all those active links that you posted are in the chat. Um, but anything else? Um, uh, by the way, you as I if you missed it earlier, I said she did episode 104 of Warrior versus Zombie. And I will just tell you, uh, Bill already took me up on it, but if you want to get your story and your vision out in an authentic way, a podcast interview, not starting a podcast, but just being on somebody's podcast and sharing your value is a free thing that you can take advantage of that's available in this community. So don't just keep going and ignore the opportunities. So, Katrina, anything else? Uh, I think I've said it all. You, you, <laughs> you did, you've done so amazing. I can chat if you guys want to later. Okay. <laughs> and, and I would encourage you. She's, she's amazing. And even though she's on the left coast and she's in Sacramento, I still love her. So, uh, <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. So I'm on uh, the best coast, not the west coast. No, I said left coast. I'm the best coast. Oh, okay. The best coast. Okay. <laughs> the best coast. Well... You know, people from New York that are that were on Maury left and and Randy's not here, but uh, they may argue. Uh, Robbie D, you know, you've been over on the on the East Coast, so uh, but that's not the least coast, is it? Is it? <laughs> She's in the best, and you're in the least. No, I'm just kidding.